Hey guys, today we're talking about area and circumference. Let's look at some parts of the circle so that way we can find both. If we look at a circle, this line that extends from the center of the circle to one edge of the circle is called the radius. If it extends from one end through the center to another end, it's called the diameter. So if we wanted to find the outside of the circle or circumference, we can take and use one of these two formulas to find circumference or the outside edge of the circle. Notice that pi right here is the constant. So the circumference of the circle is equal to pi times its diameter or pi times twice the radius. Diameter equals two times the radius. If you look here, you're getting half of the diameter when you have a radius. So these two formulas are the exact same thing. If you have radius, you just need to double it so you have your diameter. If you have your diameter, you need to cut it in half so you have your radius, okay? So let's look at an example. Find the circumference, C, of a circle with a radius of 21 inches. So should we use this formula or this formula? Well, this one has radius, so it would make most sense to write this formula down. I call this flying. Formula, work, answer with label. Okay, the L is silent. So you're going to take C equaling 2 times pi, which we know to be 3.14, and if you don't know that, write that down, times your radius of 21. Okay, so we're going to multiply these three numbers together. I'm going to multiply these two first and then multiply by pi because this would be my diameter then. Circumference equals 131 and 88 hundredths. I don't need to um, round that because hundredths are very easy to write out. And these are inches, not inches squared, not inches cubed, just inches, because it's just measuring around here. If I had one of those flexible rulers um, that they use for fashion and other um, tailoring, I could wrap it around this and measure it. So there's no need for a square. Okay, find the circumference of each circle. Okay, so if we look at this one, what do they give us? The diameter. The diameter equals 70 inches. So it would make most sense to use this formula right here because I have the diameter. I'm going to show all my work. So I'm going to plug in pi as 3.14 and plug in my diameter as 70. And when I multiply that, I get 219 and 8 tenths inches. I did my formula, my work, and here's my answer with a label. Okay, over here we have 7 eighths of an inch. So this is my radius. Okay, so I'm going to use this formula because it gives me radius right away. 2 times my pi, which is 3.14, times 7 eighths of an inch. 7 eighths is also equivalent to 875 thousandths. When I'm working with all decimals, I usually like to change everything to a decimal. I don't like having fractions and decimals in there, but you can skip this step if you would like. Okay, so you don't have to do this one. So when you multiply them out, you get 5 and 495 thousandths inches. Okay, I've got a couple for you to try. So go ahead and try these two. Okay, so these two are the ones that I want you to try real quick. Make sure that you use the appropriate circumference formula, and I will be back in just a second to show you what I did. Okay, the first step that I want to show you is you should have used pi times diameter for this one and 2 pi r for this one. The next step is to plug in your numbers and then to solve. And in this one, I'm getting 157 inches as my answer, while down here I can change the 3 fourths to a decimal. If you want to, remember that step is optional. And when I multiply, I get 4 and 71 hundredths inches. Okay, make sure that you have checked your work. Let's look at a real world situation. Big Ben is a famous clock tower in London, England. The diameter of the clock face is 23 feet. 
find the circumference of the clock face, round to the nearest tenth. So in this one, I'm going to use pi times diameter because we know the clock face's diameter is 23 feet. So diameter is 23 feet, and they want us to find the circumference. What do they tell us, though, that we need to do? We need to do the circumference to the nearest tenth. So when I plug in 23 times pi, I get 72 and 22 hundredths feet. Is that a tenth? Absolutely not. So this is my tenths place, and the hundredths tells me what to do. It tells me to keep the 2 a 2 and not round it up. So I have 72, and I'm going to use approximately, my circumference is approximately, um, or actually not approximately, is about 72 and 2 tenths feet. Okay, so here is my answer. Go ahead and try this one. A circular fence is being placed to surround a tree. The diameter of the fence is 4 feet. How much fencing is used? Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. I'll be back in just a second to show you what I did. Okay, you should have used the diameter formula. So circumference equals pi times diameter because you're finding the circumference of this fence. All right, so plug in your pi, plug in your four feet for diameter, and we get 12 and 56 hundredths feet. But the six tells the five to become a six so our circumference is about 12.6 or 12 and 6 tenths feet. To do area, we use this formula. Please write it down. We only can use radius for this. So if you're given diameter, you have to cut it in half to find your radius. Okay, so in this particular circle, area equals pi r squared. So I'm taking 3.14 times 2, and I'm squaring it. Okay, well, order of operations tells us to first square the 2, and I get 4, and then I multiply it by pi. And since this is area, I'm filling this circle with little squares to cover it. So this is inches squared. Please make sure that you have this as your label or it's wrong. Okay, so let's look at this one. Find the area of a circle with a radius of 14 centimeters. So we're going to use the formula, and we're going to plug in 14. And when we square 14, we get 196. Multiply that by pi, and we get 615 and 44 hundredths centimeters squared. Not cubed, whoops. Okay, so go ahead and try this one, and I'll be back in just a second to show you what I did. Okay, so here's how you do it. First, plug your 3 and 2 tenths centimeters into the formula. Go ahead and square the 3 and 2 centimeters, and then multiply it by pi. So they want us to round this to the nearest tenth, so the 5 tells the 1 to become a 2. So our area is going to be about 32 and 2 tenths centimeters squared. Let's look at a real world situation. We've got a swimming pool with a diameter of 30 feet that's painted blue. So how many square feet are blue? Our formula, though, doesn't allow us to put plug in diameter because it's radius. So the first step is to cut our 30 in half to find our radius. So we know the radius is 15 feet. Let's plug that in. And when we square it, we get 225. If we multiply that by pi, we get three, or we get 706 and 5 tenths feet squared. Okay, go ahead and try this real world um, question for me, and I'll be back in just a second to show you what I did. Okay, so here's my work. Okay, they give us the diameter, so we have to find the radius, and when we square that, we get 144. Taking that times pi, we get 452 and 16 millimeters squared. But they want us to round to the nearest tenth, so 452 and 2 tenths millimeters squared is my about my area. These last two questions are the most challenging, so I really need you to pay attention because I'm going to do both of them with you. 
Let's try putting what we know all together. We know the area of squares. We've done that several times before. The area of a square is the side squared, or just the length times the width, however you want to think about that. So you have an 8 and you're squaring it. So the area of our square is 8 times 8, or 64. So this is 64 feet squared. So if this is our length of our square, it's also our diameter. So we have our area of our square and we need our area of our circle. So if our diameter of our circle is eight, our radius of our circle is four. So if we square that, we get 16 and multiply it by pi and we get 50 and 24 hundredths feet squared. Now, they want us to just find the shaded region. So, how do I get rid of this circle? Well, think about how you would get rid of anything in math. Subtraction, right? So, you take your 64 and take your 50 and 24 hundredths away from it. So, we get 13 and 76 hundredths feet squared in all. All right. Go ahead and try this one. Miss Voss is making a new hall pass to hang on her door. She wants to paint it light purple. How much paint will she need in square inches to cover her new hall pass? Remember, to find the area of the circle, it's pi times radius squared. So, you have diameter. Be careful. All right. I'm going to show you what I did, so make sure that you've already tried this. We're going to plug in our diameter, or excuse me, our radius, which is 1, because we cut that in half. So our area of the circle is literally 3.14 inches squared. Now, what if we wanted to know how much room is left on her door? Now what would you do? Well, if you have your area of your circle, figure out the rectangle. Rectangle's areas are the length times the height, or the base times the height, however you want to, whatever you want to call it. We're multiplying the 3 times the 6. So when you multiply 3 times 6, you get 18. So we need to take this 3.14 away from 18. What do we get? We get 14 and 86 hundredths inches squared. And that's all I've got for you. See you next time.